Hello and welcome to this week's Fundamentals. My name is Thomas and I'm the host of this channel. After multiple subscriber requests, here are another video about DAOs. In this video, I will have a deeper look into DAOs. So what type of DAOs are already in existence? What is the weaknesses of DAOs? What are the problems they are encountering currently? But also, is a DAO a good investment? So with that said, let's jump into this week's video. I will start this video with an article from Forbes. What are DAOs and why you should pay attention? So Wikipedia defined DAO as a decentralized autonomous organization, as an organization represented by rules and coded as a transparent computer program, controlled by the organizational members and not influenced by a central government. As the rules are embedded into the code, no managers are needed, thus removing any bureaucracy or hierarchy models. So where you, where you can compare it with is like a company. So a company has investors, it has founders, it has people invested in the company. So now you no longer need the company to be invested and to work together uh, with the certain rules. So that is how you can see it now. Bitcoin is generally considered to be the first functional DAO as it is programmed rules, functions autonomously and is coordinated through a consensus protocol. So I partly agree with this because indeed it is a certain set of rules, Bitcoin, but you can't really change the rules of Bitcoin. They have been, it has been created in 2011 and we haven't been able to change it. We've only been able to fork it, but that creates a different uh, network. And if you would like to know what the forks are, I will give you create a separate video about that. What makes DAOs different? The firmness of a DAO is a smart contract. The smart contract represents the rules in the organization and holds the organization storage. So that can be wealth, for example, or NFTs or anything. No one can edit the rules without people noticing because DAOs are transparent and public. Up to today, we are used to companies backed by legal status. A DAO may perfectly function without it, as it can be structured as a general partnerships. So you no longer need laws or processes in place. All the rules can be created in the DAO. In comparison to traditional companies, DAOs have a democratized organization. All members of the DAO need to vote for any change to be implemented, instead of implemented changes by a sole party depending on the company structure. So for example, a CEO or the main investors can change a company while there's more people invested in the company. So it's not very democratical. DAO's operations are fully transparent and global. Meanwhile, traditional companies' operations are private. So they're also not visible for everyone else. Only the organizations who know what is happening and they are not always global. So one potential problem with the voting system is that even if a security hole was spotted in initial code, so there is a place for hackers to get into the DAO, it can't be corrected until the majority votes on it. So indeed, when a problem is in the DAO, everyone has to vote for the solution. And while the voting process is taking place, hackers can indeed make uh, use of the bug and steal the funds, the NFTs, or put any transactions out of the DAO. So this is a big security issue. So far, DAOs have been used for multiple purposes, such as an investment, charity, fundraising, borrowing, or buying NFTs, all without intermediaries, no lawyers, no bankers, no third parties, no nothing. So you can have a better idea, for example, a DAO can accept donations from anyone around the world and the members can decide how to spend donations. DAOs envision a collective organization owned and managed by its members, with all of them having a voice. Many analysts and industry insiders affirm this type of organization is coming to prominence. 
even potentially replacing some traditional companies. But before that happens, obviously a lot of legislation and laws need to be in place. Then I wanted to dig into what type of uh, DAOs are already existing. So in my interview video that you saw from last week, we interviewed an Ethereum developer about real estate on the DAO, but there is multiple other DAOs available as well. So type of DAOs. It's important to understand that a DAO is a broad term that encompasses a huge number of different types of groups and businesses. Two collectives can be vastly different, but still both be DAOs. So there is the Pleasure DAO, which collects various NFTs and invests in other assets. So this is an active fund, let's say. So it's a fund that buys um, properties, digital properties, and everyone that owns the fund is also able to vote on what to buy. Then there's the Her Story DAO, which collects funds, uh, collects and funds projects by black women and non-binary artists. Then there is the Komorabi Collective DAO, funds women and non-binary crypto founders. So not all DAOs are profitable. There is also a lot of DAOs that are funding other projects. Then there is the Friends with Benefits DAO, which is an exclusive social club which you pay to enter. So just as you want to become an, a part of the, the Bitcoin club, so you want to own Bitcoin uh, with only 21 million available, the Friends with Benefits club only has 1 million available. And as I understood correctly, you need 75 to be a full member of the Friends with Benefits DAO. Then there is the Meta Cartel Venture DAO, which is a for-profit business that invests in early stage decentralized applications. So again, this is an early stage investment fund that invests in projects when they're small, uh, waiting for it to be big. So the communication with these DAOs is mostly happening online in separate groups or on Discord or on any other meetup platform. In traditional organizations, there is a typical hierarchy, a formal board of directors, executives and upper management, which determine the structure of, a, of half the power to make changes. DAOs, on the other hand, are decentralized, which means that they aren't governed by any one person or identity. The rules of the governance of each DAO is coded in the smart contract on the blockchain and cannot be changed unless voted upon by the DAO members. So another big difference. Then, to obtain voting power or membership in a DAO, you typically need to buy governance tokens, which are currencies that are tied to a certain project. So a governance token is a token that you can use to vote. In some DAOs, governance tokens can, can only be obtained in a structured funding round. So there is a selective group of people that are able to buy these governance tokens. And occasionally, demands exceeds the amount of tokens available. By holding these tokens, members are typically able to own equity in a DAO and help shape the DAO's future. So just to explain to you the idea behind a DAO and how it is profitable. So if you have an investment DAO, your DAO is holding uh, other assets. When these other assets are increasing, the value of your DAO is increasing. It's the same as a business. If a business starts acquiring other businesses, then it absorbs the value of those other businesses and the price will increase. So if you hold stocks, those stocks will also increase. The same as the example from the interview I had last week, if, it, if a DAO obtains property and the property becomes more valuable, so becomes a DAO, so becomes the governance tokens. So that's how you can make money on DAO governance tokens. DAOs will also need to overcome many potential regulatory and legal challenges, especially in the US. There are several unknown, uh, unknowns regarding how potential legal framework across the US could impact DAOs and how they operate. So they will compete with legal structures, so lawyers, bankers, and with these DAOs, they no longer need all these third parties just to create a company and maintain a company uh, legally. So with that said, I wanted to get to an example. So this is the Friends with Benefits uh, token. So this is a governance token. If you want to be part of their club of 1 million uh, maximum supply, there is already a market cap of 46 million. And 
the more artists it obtains, the more assets it obtains, the bigger the, the growth. And I read that this club will also host parties and special events. And when you want to be part of this club, you need to have the tokens. And as I understood, you need 75 tokens to be part of this club. So this club creates a demand and with this demand, the price of each token will rise. So that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned more about DAOs and you will do your own research in what is a good DAO. If you know any good DAO or any good project, please leave it in the comments and I will have a look into it. And I hope to see you next week. Bye.